two NCR cities, same region, similar rainfall patterns. One drowns, the other doesn't. On September 1st, Gurugram got over 100 millimeters of rain in just a few hours. This so-called Millennium City turned into Venice. Highways underwater, commuters stuck for hours. People even joked, should I just sleep in the office tonight? Noida? Mostly fine. Why? I'm your host, Lavanya, and in this episode of The Climate Brief, we are unpacking why Gurugram sinks every monsoon, while Noida, just next door, stays afloat. It is the story of rain becoming more chaotic thanks to our old friend climate change, yes. But more importantly, it's a story of planning, design, and the choices that shape our cities. September 1st, mid-afternoon, the skies opened up over Gurugram. Between 3 and 7 p.m., the city was hit with over 100 millimeters of rainfall. More than three quarters of its normal rainfall for the entire month, packed into just a few hours. In minutes, Gurugram's busiest stretches were underwater. The Delhi-Jaipur Highway, NH48, turned into a parking lot. Bumper to bumper jams stretched for seven to eight kilometers. Some commuters reported being stuck for two to three hours. People abandoned their cars. Some waded through waist-deep water, laptops balanced on their heads. Others checked into roadside hotels just to escape the chaos. Emergency calls flooded traffic control rooms. Even ambulances struggled to move. On social media, outrage mixed with dark humor. Gurgaon is an absolute mockery, one user wrote. Another posted a Google Maps screenshot highlighting all the flood-affected areas. Memes started flooding in about Gurugram citizens making it to office in the incessant rain. This wasn't new. In 2016, the city was paralyzed for nearly 20 hours after a downpour, the infamous Guru Jam. Almost a decade later, nothing has changed. Gurugram is still one heavy shower away from chaos. The question is, why? Was it just the heavy rain? Well, 100 millimeters in a few hours is intense, but it's not unheard of in India. Remember Mumbai's 2005 cloudburst? That was 944 millimeters in a single day. Gurugram saw a fraction of that and has, in fact, seen it several times in the past. And yet the city drowned. The real problem lies in the design, the structural flaws in urban planning and chronic neglect of the drainage systems. Geography should have been Gurugram's strength. Sitting at the foothills of the Aravalis, the city naturally slopes north towards the Najafgarh Basin. Historically, stormwater flowed along this gradient and exited into larger drains and wetlands. Modern road geometry and real estate blocks now interrupt that flow. Some corridors like Golf Course Road behave like low dams. Water hits a wall and spreads across carriageways. That is why streets start acting like canals within minutes. Now look at the sponges the city has removed. In 1956, Gurgaon district had around 640 recorded water bodies. By 2018, that number had fallen to roughly 251. Entire sectors in townships have been built on top of catchment basins that once held flood water. When the clouds open up now, there's simply nowhere for the water to go but the streets. Even the drains that do exist can't keep up. Take the Badshapur drain. Once 45 meters wide, it's been narrowed to under 10 meters in places by encroachment and concretization. The National Green Tribunal has already warned boxing these drains prevents recharge and multiplies flood risk. And yet, despite 500 crore rupees spent on drainage in the past decade, little has changed on the ground. Then there's the green cover. 10 years ago, about 9% of Gurugram was green space. Today, it's fallen below 4%. That means less soil to soak up rain, more concrete to speed up runoff. Ironically, the city floods during monsoon and faces falling groundwater levels the rest of the year, a paradox created by poor planning. So when Gurgaon drowns, it's not just because of the rain. 
It's because we've deleted the sponges, narrowed the drains and walled off the natural slope. But here's the twist. Noida, right next door, faces the same monsoon. Yet it holds up. Why? We'll find out. Noida was born as a plan. It was set up on April 17, 1976 under the UP Industrial Area Development Act with one development authority that acquires land and lays roads and drains. The new Okla Industrial Development Authority, hence the name Noida. Noida today spans about 20,316 hectares, grown from 50 villages acquired initially to 81 villages now. Roads, sewers and storm drains came before towers and malls did. Developers plugged into one common network. The hierarchy was clear. From lanes into sector drains, sector drains into trunk lines, trunk lines into safe outfalls. Water always had a path. On paper and on ground, Noida Stormwater has places to go. The city drains mainly to the Yamuna and partly to the Hinden through a lattice of major channels. You'll see the Hinden Cut, an engineered link the Shahadra drain through sectors 14 to 16, and the Noida drain outfalling near sector 168. That network is designed with the natural northeast to southwest slope. Planners also did something simple but powerful. They kept riverfront land largely off limits to urbanization. The master plan reserves 5,000 plus hectares along the Yamuna and Hinden as green or open, allowing only low intensity recreational use. Translation, when rivers swell, there is room for the water. In Gurgaon, storm drains are built for roughly 10 millimeters per hour. On recent rain days, the city took over 133 millimeters in an evening, far beyond capacity, leading to three to four feet of water on arterial roads and a city-wide standstill. Over in Noida, the authority keeps tuning the system. Between 2023 and 2025, it began covering and regrading sector drains, adding 40-foot gas chimneys and grills every 100 meters so super sucker machines can actually clean silt. Individual stretches run from 400 to 930 meters with standard 6-meter widths and costs 5.29 to 13.84 crores per segment. The goal is simple, stop backflow into homes during monsoon peaks. So what does this tell us? Gurugram didn't collapse because of rain alone. It collapsed because it has grown without a plan. Natural slopes blocked, water bodies erased, drains narrowed, green cover lost. The rain only exposed the cracks. Noida shows that when you plan infrastructure first, when you respect slopes, outfalls and floodplains, the same monsoon doesn't feel like a disaster. Why does this matter more than ever today? Climate change is going to make rainfall events more erratic. More spells of intense rain are likely to become more frequent. And without good urban planning, we are literally doomed. I'm your host, Lavanya, and this was The Climate Brief. If you found this breakdown useful, like the video and do hit subscribe. It helps us bring more such stories about how climate, cities and design collide. And tell us in the comments, has your city gone underwater this monsoon? We will meet again next week.